Hello everybody out there in the Steam world and the Hive world. I am using both right now and I'm just waiting to see where both go in the future and then maybe I'll stop using one or the other. I really want to support both though so it's really good that Splinterlands is supporting both. So right now I'm gonna make a video to show you some battles with the theme monster of this week which is the Undead Minotaur. So let's go take a look at the Undead Minotaur. So this is a rewards card. It's an older rewards card, so if you're a newer player, you might have to go out and purchase him, but he's not an expensive card. Um, that's for sure. Doo, doo, doo. Of course it lags a little. Yeah, under a penny, you can get a level four one for 20 cents. So you can get a max one out for $5. So it's not an expensive card. I'm gonna tell the honest truth. I don't know how good this card is on the death set just because they have some very good first row position tanks. And the honest truth for this week, to use him in a battle was kind of difficult to really showcase him as a pivotal point of why I won the battle. So first I'll talk a little bit about the card. He's a six cost, three damage, four life. I'm gonna go with the level 10 stats because that's what I have. I'm, a, I'm sorry, three damage, four speed, and eight life he has double strike and retaliate so that's a pretty good combo when it comes to abilities because he'll hit relatively early he'll hit for uh, six damage on his double strike if he hits both hits and then if he when he gets hit he might get hit back so very easily in one turn he can deal nine damage now that card in itself uh, probably seems amazing. The reason why I think it is a bit of trouble on the death team, and I will just go to Untamed Alpha Wards, because at around six cost, they have the Haunted Spirit with his self heal. And this is kind of a popular tank for the death team, if, unless there's a no healing match. And I mean, for five, he does one more damage on his regular attack, which means he does uh, four if he hits, whereas he'll only do three on the first hit, then three if he hits a second hit for two more, which is nice. But he has one less HP. He doesn't have void, so he can get killed by magic. And he doesn't heal himself. The reason why that's a bigger deal is because the death has got a shortage of other cards that heal. In the alpha set, there isn't a healer. In the Untamed set, there is a car. Is there a healer? I don't think there is. Um, the only card in. Do you get heal? Let me double check. No. So, they don't have a, a, a back row healer except for. I have to put in the promo cards. Here he is uh, Pegasus. And I might be wrong on that. If I'm wrong on that, call me out. I'm forgetting. Oh! You, what do you do? Nope, you don't heal either. So the only card in the death set that has the healing ability that I'm aware of is the uh, self-heal of the Haunted Spirit and then the heal that is on the Corrupted Pegasus. Now I will admit, Pegasus with Undead Minotaur is a good combo. Let's go ahead and go back to talking about the featured card, but I just wanted to show you one of the reasons why I, he's not really my favorite is really because of the the other tank in the set the similar cost that I just use mostly instead. But the idea behind this is that he would do up to 9 damage on the first on his first turn, 9 damage on his second turn. And then if he's dead after that, well he's already dealt 18 damage for 6 cost, that's pretty strong. But that's hoping you get a retaliate on both strikes. So a little bit of the times when I would use this card, obviously a, any double strike on um uh, Malay Mayhem, I mean on Monster May Mayhem and Malay and the Malay game where everyone gets Malay or all Malay monsters uh, can attack or everyone gets Sneak, I'm sorry, Super Sneak. Sorry, my brain's not working perfectly today. But in a Super Sneak game, he's great, especially because you can play the Death Summer that gives minus one attack to everybody, uh, probably seeing a lot of melee monsters in either in either of those formats, and then your melee monster gets to attack twice, and when he gets hit, he might attack back. Um, and being able to attack twice from, like, 
her back row position is really strong. I didn't actually get one of those matchups to show you, which I was disappointed in, but I, I played a lot of death in the last couple of days, and I just didn't get that matchup in a time frame when I thought I could really use him and showcase that. But that's really when I think his best play would be is not back back row in a super sneak, but not the tank on a super sneak. And so he's just pounding that last position. And even if he hits into thorns, he has eight life. So he'll live a turn. He'll hit four times before he'll kill himself. Uh, maybe even five if you're using a card that gives him that ninth life. So um, for that reason, I like him in that format. I think he's better than the Hobgoblin who double attacks. And if you have enough mana to play both of them, then you'll have two guys in the back row that are double attacking in that game mode, which can be really strong. I'm going to go ahead and get to some of my battles here that I have to show you. So here, this was a Malay Mayhem fight. So let me uh, bring this up, and then I'm going to a little bit about it. I totally messed up and just made you all mad at me if you got this far in the video, but I'm just going to set up the battle anyways. So this was Malay only and let me bring this up so I, I can double check I think it might have been okay no healing so so because it was no healing in Malay and Malay only on close up and personal I decided to go death uh, the reason I did this was because in Malay only I like death because they do the minus one attack so I'm gonna weaken the other team and then as far as my setup, I'll show you what I did. So I put him in the front row, hoping that he would get in his double attacks and his retaliates and that he would do a lot of damage to the other front row monster, possibly retaliate to a reach monster, which I was expecting. And then I put um, the Dark the, the dark Iron here to be taunting the sneak monsters. Um, I did set this up too so that I had two monsters with scavenger on the death team So as monsters died they would gain life and then I played one sneak monster um, I Played this guy who has opportunity I went ahead and I, I kind of expected him to die kind of early to deal out a lot of damage but die and then this uh, flying corrupted Pegasus would move into this position here and start attacking so that's why I put him there. I didn't know how long the, the Undead Minotaur would last up here. And then in the last position, I just put the Chain Golem, because this was a 48 mana match, and I wanted to use some bigger cards here. Um, and there's just not that many big cards on, on the death team that can attack from the back row. That's why I ended up using these two cards, which only cost three. But I put him here is kind of a shielded with armor any sneak monsters that were hitting him weren't going to do much damage and he was going to just he in a situation where they did kill him which i didn't think they would he would just be there as like my last line of defense to protect these two little guys and if he made it to the front row he'd have a chance at using his stun to beat a couple front row monsters all on his own now, in this matchup, I ended up being much higher leveled. So I'm going to go through it kind of quick because uh, it'll sh I'll show you. The, the, the Minotaur kind of worked how I wanted, but he just he wasn't the star of the fight. And he wasn't the um, real like key thing here. So he gets stunned. His speed does give him a miss. So then he's stunned and he's stuck there. That poison was pretty cool because that's going to let my sneak monster actually finish off that turtle eventually you will see the scavenger thing worked out really well because all these monsters are dying off of the board now i have a tank with 18 hp 19 hp sitting here in the front row who's flying but that is not really a game that the minotaur won for me the one nice thing the minotaur did do in the early of the on in that match was he took out the armor from the goblin mech he took it all out so that was a pretty simple win. Again, that was more about me having higher mana cards. But my, my theory did work. I did put the Minotaur up front. I wanted him to die. And then I wanted him to... Uh, 
the the big tank to then swoop in with the reach character behind him ha the minotaur having already done some damage and then took in some hits so this is one where he shows off a little bit better so in this match i'll show you one more um i put him up in the tank row i did this because i thought in this one in this particular matchup and monocost i would use him instead of the haunted spirit i'm still not sure it was the right move but because of just the way things are set up i thought this would be good so let me pull up the stats and then i'll talk a little bit more okay so this was no legendaries and only 20 mana cap uh, i like death team for no legendaries because they have a lot of good cards that are not legendary and so I took a chance, and uh, in our no legendary match, I thought I would play the Screaming Banshee and wouldn't get a magic reflect. That didn't end up working out for me. But in this and in this scenario, because I feel like he's kind of squishy and I didn't have a healer to use for him without my legendary healer, I put the chicken in front to take the first hit. I wanted the chicken to take the first hit. I was hoping there would be somebody faster than his four speed. So they would hit the chicken, kill it. He would move up and still get to attack on his first turn. That didn't end up happening. But one thing retaliate kind of helps with, and I think you're going to see that in this battle, is you have a self-healing monster here who's going to heal himself, hit, and then get countered and get hit, and then the double, double uh, hit can kill him. Again, though, in this scenario, my cards far out leveled the other player's cards. I'm not sure why that ended up happening. Um, there seem to be a lot of people in Diamond lately who have lower level cards, which is maybe good for the, the player base, but either that or I just need to play more because once again, in this example, I'm going to win this match pretty easily, but because my cards, you know, I have a, a level 7 Jester, he has a level 5, I have a level 10 he has a level five. I have a level seven. This is a max. This is a level five. Um, even him here, I had a chance at stopping him from healing, which is kind of what I was going for with there. But the the hopeful theory behind my match was chicken dies. He moves up. Uh, they do some damage to the tank, and then on his double attack, you know, hopefully we we do a lot of damage to that first row position. It doesn't work out like that. I'll go ahead and start it go a little slower because he didn't have anybody fast enough but my cards are just so strong that you'll see even that which was kind of a bummer and you'll see here there he heals himself and he hits the chicken now we move forward I get a retaliate here which was actually pretty cool because that dropped him down to two so then I double hit him he's gone they gain an HP I miss but then I get another retaliate pop them for three tank for tank and this is kind of a funny game a way to win a game where I had much better cards but it's uh, just gestures up front and I still have an attacker so hey the game works out that way sometimes right you have the way better cards and still you barely win the fight but I still won um, I have a few more I could show you but I just had a hard time really really showing this card i'll go ahead and show you this one we'll just go through it quickly because i don't want to make the video too long and showing you a lot a lot of battles this is another setup that can work so in this one without the legendaries blocked i put him out in the front row to be the tank with the healer behind him uh, the three speed four speed matchup is good because he'll attack first take any damage from thorns any any hits from um you know, any, any, any kind of early hits, he'll get healed. And then uh, he's, we've got a lot of damage here on these two attackers, right? He can deal three, he can deal three. So that's uh, that was going to be nine. Again, um, uh, hopefully next video I'll have some more competitive fights to show you. Uh, this is somebody who played uh, lower cards but similar cards. Um, I do think if he had uh, diamond level cards like he should have, in this league he would have beat me if this dark enchantress had a stun he would have had a definitely a serious chance to win but he only had her at level two 
um, because he's set up to kill off him with the, with the Twisted Jester. It's not going to matter. I mean, there's no magic reflect here. I can't even hurt him with that because of the void. And this two on the sneak of the badger would have a hard time hitting this uh, card if it was higher level because it would have more speed and be flying. So not what end up, ends up happening. Due to the no stun, uh, I really dominate this fight. So I said I wasn't going to talk too much, but I did. I'll speed it up and you'll watch. This one doesn't really that competitive. So there's a double attack. There's that guy's down. And then you'll see here they do a little bit of damage. But the double attack. Now he can't attack again with his jester. Double attack. I guess it does really show you how powerful a double attack really can be. It can make somebody who doesn't seem like they're hitting that hard kill people very quickly. So that's all I wanted to show you as far as the battles. As you can see, I did. I used him in every game there in a row, and I played him some more down in this area, and I didn't do as well. And right here, this was when I was trying to do two things at once. That is a mistake. Who would have thought that I would forget to make a game? What is that? One, two, three, four, five times in a row, and six times out of seven games. <laughs> And then one more, and then two, two more. So I've been pretty distracted. I've been trying to squeeze this game uh, matches in during the day at home when I'm on furlough from work. And the kids come into the room, or one of them starts screaming, and I have to go be a dad. So I'm not mad about that. I'm not even mad about this one that happened just a little while today before I thought I was going to make a video. It's just the way it is sometimes. Just like that notification popping up at the end. But I hope everybody out there is staying healthy. I know we're in a weird time in the world. I hope uh, you're playing Splinterlands and just having fun. And I will talk to you all later. Thank you. Goodbye.